Hey there, welcome to Structure Pro. Here we're going to be doing uh, an example on the virtual work method applied to trusses. So we're given this truss here. It has joints A, B, C, D, and E, and has a 30 kip load applied at joint C horizontally. And we're asked to find the vertical deflection at joint D due to this 30 kip load. So I'm actually kind of excited for this example. The principle of virtual work is a pleasure to use. Uh, so the second thing we're actually asked for, we're not just asked for one thing here. The second thing is a little more complicated. We're going to assume that there's no loads on the structure, and we're going to assume that member AE is fabricated 8 fifths of an inch too long. And we're asked how far to the right should support B be moved to ensure that there is no vertical deflection at D as a result of this fabrication error. So no deflection at joint D. That should say vertical deflection. Okay. Change those to capitals, be consistent, proper nouns, member AE, support B and joint D. All right, so let's take a look at these equations I've provided here. The first we derived in a previous video. This is the principle of virtual work equation for trusses. And it looks like that's all we will need to solve part A. For part B, however, we're going to need the more general form of the equation, specifically on the left side of the equal sign, where the support movement comes into place. So we're going to see how that plays out when we go through the example. So we should start by gathering the information that's in these equations. So we need our P system to, to solve for FPs and our lengths of our members, of course, and our Q system. We need to know what Q is and our member force is due to Q, FQ. So let's start here with our P system. We also have the Q system here. You'll notice I put Q equals four kips there. Don't worry about that, we'll get to that. Don't freak out that it's not one kip. Anyways, back to our P system. So, we have our horizontal reaction at B, Bx, and if we sum all the moments about A, we see Bx is 30 times 24 over 12 is 60. 60 kips has to be double because it has half the moment arm. We'll just draw in our dimensions here. Okay, and we also have an Ax. And AX has to be 30 kips the opposite way to balance out the BX. And finally, AY has to be zero because some of all the forces in the Y direction must equal to zero. So we can analyze this truss quick time. First, we identify these zero force members, CD and DE, because the members are perpendicular to each other and there is no external load acting at D. Next, we see that member CE must balance the completely the horizontal force P, so that means there's a 30. We quickly realize that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle in the geometry of member CE, so that means the vertical part is 40, and the uh, hypotenuse is 50, and then wow, this truss is just solving itself. Okay, I think I got it right there. If I'm wrong, put it in the comments below. So now we can populate this table here for FP. It's one of the key pieces of information we needed, so I'm just writing down these member forces that we found, and we pay attention to signs here, uh, because different signs could mean different things. Always got to pay attention. Okay, so like I said, this Q equals 4 was strategically chosen, and we'll see why in a second, because as we sum all the moments about A, we find that this time the reaction Bx is equal to three kips. So it would have been a fraction had we used one, but this way it's just three. Try it out, you'll find it's three. Applying our equations of equilibrium, we can also find the reactions at A. This easily tells us what the member forces in AE are, or I guess what the member force is, single force member. So that's a three, four, five triangle there. So that means that there's five kips in compression member AE. 
Remember BE is easily solved for looking at BX, so we can populate this FQ column of the table. Next we have to deal with this delta LP column. So we can recall that delta LP is FPL over AE. From the previous slide, AE is 2 inches squared times 9,000 kips per inch squared. So you can check my math, but I've solved all these values for you. And we notice that anything with an FP of 0, it's also going to be 0 here. Yes, I would recommend using a spreadsheet, by the way. Finally, the last column, we notice anything with an FP equals 0 or an FQ equals 0 ends up being 0 in this last column. So looking at this, we didn't really need the full table. We could have just recognized that only member AE and member BE have both FPs and FQs, and we could have just done a summation that way. That might have been easier, but the spreadsheet or the table is a good way to set it up, especially for a more complicated trusses. So summing this class column, we find that we have a delta P, or if we recall, that's really a delta D in the vertical direction, of 0 0.895 inches, and that's going to be in the same direction as Q, so downwards. Moving on to part B, where we were going to take away all the external forces and only have a fabrication error on bar AE of 8 fifths of an inch. And recall we were asked how far to the right must support B move to ensure that there is no vertical deflection at D. So we already have the Q system corresponding to the vertical deflection at D. So we can write that the Q of 4 kips applied at D is going to be doing a certain amount of work. In fact, it's going to be doing 4 kips times 0 inches amount of work, which is 0, because we're saying that D is not moving in the vertical direction. But it's not the only external force doing work here in this Q system. BX will be doing work if we move support B to the right. It will be doing negative work because our BX is to the left, but it will be doing work. So we have our three kips, our BX reaction, times delta BH, how much support B is moving. And we set this three kips delta BH equal to the negative 5 kips, the member force in AE in our virtual system, times the fabrication error, 8 fifths of an inch. This gives us an easy equation to solve. We divide both sides by 3, fives cancel out, we're left with negative 8 over 3 inches, and this will be to the right, so we can take away the negative, just knowing it's in the opposite direction of Bx. So that's our final answer there. Delta BH is 8 over 3 inches. All right, well done. So now we've applied the principle of virtual work to trusses with both an external load and a fabrication error to find resulting displacements. And if that was even half the fun for you that it was for me, then we're both having a lot of fun here. So keep up the practice.